Winning promotion to the second division two years ago was the finest moment in the unspectacular history of Gillingham Football Club. After a season of consolidation in Division 2, manager Tony Pulis had high hopes, so did the fans. The team struggled, the season was going nowhere, and then something clicked. The club star striker Ariakin Bai found his form just in time to mastermind an away win at leaders Watford. Then, six days later, 17-year-old Jimmy Corbett scored his first ever goal to beat Bristol City, and the team's transformation had begun. The goals kept flowing, and suddenly this small town football club forgot about relegation. After Saturday, although we didn't deserve to lose, it's important we won tonight. Terrific result. Let's hope the results are going for us. Well done, lads. Gillingham jumped 16 places into the last playoff spot. Now the race is on for promotion. Adiakin Bai is not the kind of name you forget easily. From Nigeria to Norwich, the man who started out as a sprinter is fast becoming a big noise, and not just in Kent. His goals have alerted the rest of the country to a young man with the maturity beyond his 23 years. A quiet family man at home. On the pitch, a powerful athlete whose pace causes problems to any defence. But it's off the pitch where he's most creative. Give him a pencil and paper and he's happy. Mostly I do it when I come back from training. Something, something for me to do. Or sometimes I take it to my mum's, just relax and do it at my mum's. And then I'll send it off to the um, school and uh, um, see what happens from there. But I only get, I only get um, quality marks on it so I can fall on something after football. Something to do after football. Just do drawing, relaxing. And I like to take up a little bit of painting as well. And I like to play saxophone as well. I love it. But I ain't got a saxophone. I mean, Matty, mum was at me for not doing things like, you know, Matt Bryan. Mum was at me for not doing things like fishing, golf. I just can't do it. I think this golf is boring. I mean, you just have to whack the ball and check, walk up, walk up miles after. I can't, I can't see myself doing that. I'm fishing. <laughs> you just do fishing, you sit there for ages, catch a fish. And you put it back in. I don't see the point doing that. But to other people is relaxing. I mean, to, to other people, people might think art is boring, but I enjoy it. So people got different things. You get some people who are big time. I can't really say any names. Like, I mean, just just love talking about football all the time. I'm footballer this. I'm footballer that. I'm this. I can do this. I can do that. But to that, that, that don't appeal to me at all. That's not appeal to me one bit. I mean. I can go and play for a big club, it doesn't mean nothing to me. I mean, I think everyone knows what we're in it for. Um, you're in football for money, you're in football to enjoy it. So I, I'm in football today because I enjoy it. I mean, when I was playing, I could have easily stayed at Norwich and say, yeah, I'm in good money, I could stay there. But it's not, that, that wasn't the case at all. It's, it was a case of me because I enjoy football. And to, I could take a step lower. I, can, I mean, I could even take a step lower than this just to play football because I enjoy it. Money is not the matter to me at all. Everything seems to be falling into place. The bad news is on the way. Guy Butters, the club's key defender, has broken his left leg. The former Tottenham centre-half will not play again this season. A massive blow to the promotion hopes. When I first done it, I didn't think it was as bad as, as what it was. I thought, oh, I was hoping that it was going to be sort of the, the smaller bone in me, in me leg, but as soon as I saw the physio's face, when he looked at the x-ray, I knew something was up, you know. And, uh, but, you know, these things happen, don't they? And you can't really do much, too much about it now. It's, it's happened and now I've just got to get on with it. I, I don't even know what I'm going to be like next week, you know? I'll probably be totally pissed off with this plaster by then and I'll have all the itches coming through and everything where I, what I can't reach. But, you know, um, I, I'm pretty... You know, I've had people around me who haven't let me get... You know, haven't let me get my head down at all. Uh, I, I've had uh, my girlfriend keep moaning at me all the time. You know, it keeps me on my toes and that and what with the two kids around. 
you know, I'm uh, I'm uh, kept busy and that. So I've really, I, I don't think I've really thought about it to a great extent, apart from the fact that you know I'm I'm going to get out of it, get better, and get back as soon as I can. It's just that uh, you know it's, it's just been such a great season, and for him to have to stand on the touchline now and watch it, you know, it's going to be killing for everybody. He, he'll still be there cheering them on. We'll be there. We won't lose the feeling. We just wanted him to be part of it, right to the, right to the wire, which he would have been. I tried getting up and down the stairs the other day. You go to the toilet, and um, I was knackered because it's obviously different muscles that I'm using, so I'm not used to it. And uh, I was knackered, like you know, only just going up and down the stairs. So God knows what I'm going to be like if I can, you know, go shopping or something. I was talking to, uh, you know, Mark O'Connor. Yeah. The, he, he went for a similar injury. He's had to give up football now uh, for it, but I think his one uh, he had a few more breaks in his leg than what I did. And um, he was saying that when he was when he had it done, he got in contact with his doctor, and that, the doctor said that he could get a wheelchair out of it. Uh, he phoned, I think he phoned up something like the Red Cross or St John's Ambulance, and for a little donation, they give you a wheelchair. You know, with the the leg bit that sticks out, so you can put your leg on it. So I was thinking of maybe doing that, you know, and getting everyone wheel me round, get me out and about, you know. Wheel me up the pub at 11 o'clock in the, in the morning and pick me up at night. <laughs> Just leave me there, I'll be all right. Guy's injury has had a major impact back at the club. A replacement needs to be signed in time for tomorrow's game, and quickly. Hello. Yes. No. He, he apparently has done it. Ian Moat told me it's already there just to fax over. I don't know. I asked him that this morning and he said the player's here. That's all he kept telling me, the player's here. Well, according to him, yes. But I don't know whether he's been telling me the truth. As well as losing Butters, the club have also agreed to sell striker Ifia Nura to Swindon for a deal in excess of £100,000. Anura was the fans' favourite after scoring 24 goals last season. He and Butters need to be replaced for tomorrow's game by the midday deadline. Slight problem, there's only one minute left. Hiya, Ian. Pardon? You've heard nothing from your chairman. Yeah. I think your chairman's spoken right, to our chairman no. anyway. But what no, my chairman has no, asked me now is, has minutes. the player right. signed the paperwork? All right, Mike, cheers. Give me five minutes. Cheers. Ian. Has the player signed the paperwork? Yes. Ian. Has he? Has he signed it? I want to know if he signed the temporary transfer. Really? That's all. She's on the other line to not count in people. She's just asking now. I don't know if she's got an answer yet. All I want to know, Ian, is if he signed it. I mean, you still have it there. We don't have it here. But has he signed it? Because it's going to save us time once uh, I know. Also, he either has or he hasn't. Been. He either has or he hasn't, Ian. And the player's signed it. The player's there and he's waiting. The player's there and he's waiting. We've got less than a minute, Gwen. But has the chairman not spoken to you yet, then? Chairman's not told him to do the paperwork. To do. Has he not done the paperwork, Gwen? The paperwork is written up. The player's there. That's what you're telling me, the isn't it? The paper. Right. You've done the paperwork. The player's there. Tell him to fax it straight to the league. Can you oh, fax it straight to the league? Oh, it's coming out now. So you'll have our chairman speaking to you now, Ian. Ian. Don't go. <laughs> God's sake, please take your mic. Yeah. Hello? It's Paul Scully, the chairman here. Yeah, I can't believe that the player's there and you haven't sent it across to the league, to be honest. The chairman said he'd get the player back. We've agreed the deal that he still comes here on loan and that he's still obliged or able to go and talk to Bournemouth on Monday. OK? Well, yeah, well, you better fax it over now to the league, straight away. And then, if, it, if your chairman tells you otherwise, just nothing happens, you know? Because it's now three minutes past 12, and it may well be the league won't even accept it now. Well, don't, don't waste any more time. Fax it straight to the league, because otherwise the league will refuse to accept it. 
So don't even talk, just phone, fax it straight away, will you? Thanks. Bye. I can't believe these people. He's very nervous, isn't he? Well, I don't know what they're doing. They know it's got to be 12 o'clock and it's now three minutes past 12. Oh, Friday the 13th. <laughs> <laughs> the deal was on and then it was off, then it was on and then it was off and then it was back on again. And at uh, two minutes to 12, the document should have gone across to the league from Notts County and whether intentionally or otherwise, they uh, didn't do it at two minutes to 12 and they did it at two minutes past 12. And uh, two minutes past 12 is just as useless as 12 minutes past two, frankly. The Football League accept it up to, up to midday, and midday is midday. And um, we're uh, frustrated, disappointed, pretty angry. And um, I feel sorry for Tony. I've just been able to chat to him. I mean, he knows I've tried the best I could. Um, but uh, that's the way football goes sometimes. I mean, the supporters will see it that we didn't sign a player. They won't see anything like the, the frantic energy and uh, efforts that were made all morning today, from seven o'clock this morning, in fact, uh, and all last evening. I've said to Paul now, uh, two weeks ago, that I think that we should be looking to bring one or two players in to strengthen our opportunities and our chances to get into the playoffs. Now we're lo losing iffy. Um, you know, it's, it's very, very important that we bring one or two in just to liven up the dressing room. We've lost, lost Guy through his injury, and Guy was... Uh, um, a stalwart in the team and, and is a you know a, a type of person that you would hate to lose. We've lost him. We're hoping that we'll get by with 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 uh, one or two others who have not been as regular as Guy. But when you lose someone like Ify who can score a goal out of nothing, um, then that is a it's a massive blow for myself and the team. Right. Okay. I think Derek Pavis has avoided me. Not surprised after this morning's episode. OK, I'll phone him this evening when he's not expecting me to phone him. About two in the morning. Thanks. There's ten games to go. Um, we've got as good a chance as anybody else. Or we did have. But we've lost two very important players. For Guy Butters, this is usually his favourite part of the week. But for the next six months at least, Saturday lunchtimes will be a painful experience. Oh, you're going to stretch that one? Yeah. Okay. This is the first serious injury of a career which started at Tottenham and then Portsmouth before Gillingham paid £225,000 for his services in October 1996. But this was the season he established himself as one of the strongest defenders in the second division. Now all the plans have gone out of the window. You're going to lay up against that far door, are you? Yeah. Right, hang on. I'd make a useless ambulance driver. Say, so come on, you jewels. <laughs> a test of character lies ahead for Guy and the team. Yeah, Guy's been um, terrific ever ever since we signed him. Uh, we paid a lot of money um, from Portsmouth, or this club, what this club has paid before. Um, but he's been ever consistent, um, and not just off the, you know, on the pitch. Sorry, off the pitch, he's been terrific as well. Um, he'd be one of the uh, the last I'd want it to happen to, but that's the way football goes.
Yeah. Well, delighted. All the results have gone for us today. I can't believe Mill beat Fulham and uh, Bristol Rovers lost and York have lost and Oldham have lost and Watford have only drawn. And uh, so as you can hear, the boys are pretty happy in here. They worked for it today. I thought it was a difficult game. A very strong side at the back, Chesterfield. But, you know, over 90 minutes, Jim didn't have a save. So we just, uh, you know, it was lovely to see Jimmy Corbett come on, score such a great goal. And uh, main thing is three points. Footballers might well lead a charmed life, but Sunday is the only full day they get to spend with their family. Club captain Andy Hessenthaler is one of the few players who lives in the area. He was born and brought up in Kent, and when Gillingham offered to make him their record signing two years ago, he couldn't resist a move back home. At the time, he was playing first division football with Watford. Stepping down a division when you're the wrong side of 30 is a bold decision, but he took it for family reasons. Don't make that funny noise. It hurts people's ears as well. Yeah. It hurts mine. They offered me a new contract, um, but um, I just felt it wasn't. It was only like a two-year contract, and um, you know I was looking for a little bit more security at the time, um, and also I needed a change. So I just um, there was a few clubs that came in for me. Uh, South End, I spoke to them. Um, Swindon and Gillingham. Get your pool table, mate. And. Um, no, I spoke to obviously uh, both clubs. South, South End was the uh, first club, and then Gillingham. And uh, obviously, being a being a hometown, um, you know, it's an uh, ambition of the club. I, you know, I really felt it was a good move for me. He a bit of a cheat, like his mum. His mum cheats as well. Life after football is not something most players like talking about. Andy still has a good couple of years left in him, but with two young children to look after, it's got to be given some thought. I really like it. What frightens me is what's going to happen when it comes to the end. I, I'm, I'm more that it's almost as no, you know you're going to be made redundant sort of at 35, you know it's coming, so you've got to, you've got to find something else you're going to do. And the lifestyle is very good now. He's at home a lot. Um, it's brilliant for the children, but when that comes to an end, it's what you've got to do to, to keep up that line. Yeah, <laughs> that that frightens me really. Oh, well, yeah. so even though you're a Division One, and Division Two player, that doesn't financially secure you for the rest of your life. Then? No. Um, no, not really. Unless you've been lucky with with clubs where you've moved around quite a bit, because I think um, you know there's a lot of a lot of players that um, you know they go to clubs. You know, they sign, they play a few matches, and then obviously there might be a new manager come in, and he doesn't, he, he doesn't like you. So you got to go on. So you get the club pay you up, and you go to another club. So that's how a lot of players make their money. But um, you know, I think if you're going to stay, in, if you're going to be financially secure in football, I think you've got to be up in the in the in the top league. You know, in that Premier League. You know, so. But uh, I mean, you can make things a lot. We're we're trying to make things a lot easier for ourselves by putting a lot of things away, so that we've got the nice house and everything, and we can maintain that. But uh, it, that, that frightens me. Andy doesn't like to think about it, but I'm always on at him at the moment because he's getting older now. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? And and Because uh, I have to go back to work. I don't have to work at the moment, but I will do. I know that. So um, that, that frightens me a lot. And the older he gets, the more I think about that, really. When he was in appearance money at Watford and he'd have an injury, I'd say, <laughs> you've got to go back and play. <laughs> yeah! yeah! <laughs> You're so oh, lucky. I'm so lucky you are. I'm so lucky. Yeah, yeah. You're so lucky. I'm going to swipe you. Even on his day off, there's no escape. As well as being a budding snooker player, little Jake is showing signs that he has the potential to follow his dad into football. I love it. Yeah, that's you know, something I love him to, to do. But uh, obviously, if he wants to do something else, then we won't stand in his way. But uh, you know, if he becomes a professional footballer, that'd be a, uh, be a dream for, for me and, and the family, you know? So, yeah, a bit, we just have to wait and see, really. He's just enjoying it at the moment more than anything. Boy, shoot! Good effort. Good goal. Good goal, mate. Good goal. It's a good strike. Good strike. He just lives and dies. Yeah, just, yeah. That's what he does. Sleeps, eats and loves football. 
Good goal, mate. Good goal. Another day off, another kid, another football. It seems all footballers spend Sundays the same way. Yeah? Get off that then. But today Adi Akin Bai only has time for a quick kickabout with his son Jermaine. Who was that? Yeah, come here. <laughs> a trip to London to meet your agent seems like hassle you could do without on a Sunday. But this is an important engagement, top of the agenda, Addy's future. His agent, Andy Mills, has been a busy man in recent weeks, with Aston Villa and other big clubs knocking on the door. I think somebody else will come in, a club will probably come in. I think there'll be a few clubs that do discuss it with the chairman, uh, Mr Scully, and I think then it's then for um, Paul Scully to decide which way Gillingham's headed, whether they whether they're going to do the same again, because obviously they could, they bought Addy for 250,000. I think without a doubt now, you'd be talking about over a million pounds, which is quite a return. Now, if they wanted to sell Addy and bring in somebody else and, and trust Tony Pulis's skills of looking at players again and turning another 250,000 into a million pounds, then I think as a chairman, I'd be quite happy. I was just watching him right. I mean, I've got, I got a few tapes of him. I was thinking, why can't I do things he'd do? I mean, I would love to achieve half of, half of the things he's achieved. I mean, it's aggressive and everything on the field, but off the field is soft, speaks to you like normal. But uh, yeah, I would, there's, there's no way I'd turn down a club like Arsenal if they come in for me, no way. Even if I was to stay in the reserve, find my way to get in the first team. Yeah, I would love to play for them. Next week, Gillingham's faithful fans take a 600 mile round trip for a day at the seaside, but they're not too impressed by what they see. It's not just a game. It's what you believe in. It's your football club. It's what you believe in. It is not just a game. I'm sorry, it's not. I'm going to go to work on Monday and I'm going to get nothing but shit because we lost a rubbish at Blackpool. And that's the third Monday running I've had to take crap because we've lost. Perhaps Mr Bloody Eckenby would like to do my job for a day. Then he can take the shit. He plays enough of it. And Daddy bounces back, but no one is prepared for the tragedy that's about to unfold. Not even the chairman. It's fully trained and highly trained. We don't need the police to tell us how to run our games. Uh, Gillingham people come and watch football here. Um, they come and watch football here. They don't need the police to tell them how to behave. <laughs>